Hey, what's going on DDO players? Axel here. So today we're gonna go through some really cool new population info that came out about three months ago from a brand new site called DDO Audit, which is playeraudit.com. And the info in here is really great and gives us a better picture of who's playing DDO and at what times and how many players there are, how many concurrent players there are specifically. So a lot of this info uh, is on here and it's really, really good. So uh, the best, for sure, the best population tracking website for DDO I've ever seen. So let's go ahead and just talk about it. So we're going to go through the site. We're going to go through parts, each tab here on the site and just talk about it. And we're going to draw some conclusions and just, just discuss it. So let's go ahead and start with um, the about tab here again you can go to this yourself at playeraudit.com and all credit for this of course goes to them and I'm going to scroll to the bottom here uh, where it, it, it says that all scripts and databases for the website were written by Clement of Thalanus and elsewhere on the website it said that the website is done um, not just with Clement of Thalanus but also in collaboration with vaultofconderact.com so those are, are the authors of, of all this data. You know, they put all this together, so all, all credit goes to them. But uh, let's go ahead and start about start and talk about this website and what it does. So the other website, DDO Oracle, is the one I'd used in the past. And that site, for sure, gives some good data. But I really like the data that DDO Audit gives because on ddooracle.com, the data was through logins, which presents a problem because logins don't necessarily reflect the population. But what DDO Audit is doing is it's directly pulling population numbers from the Who tab in game. So this guy or or gal who made this, this site has written some sort of program that pulls data directly from the game and puts it onto a spreadsheet and then makes graphs out of it. So the data is directly from the game. It's not based on logins, it's based on actual data from the who tab so that's awesome and the website on this about page and i'm not going to read through the whole all this about page you can do that yourself if you'd like but it also says that is accounted for factors such as anonymous players so it even pulls that data too it claims um, there's a lot of um, cool things this website has as well such as a report function so it gives me a better makes me more comfortable with the data just because they have things like a report function so players can report any issues or, or bugs they might experience with the site or anything they think is inaccurate and the 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 runner the author of this website here does claim to regularly check those and I believe he even mentioned he checks it daily um, to try to update the site and there's even a forum thread that has been going, I think it's older now, but has been going where, where he's been discussing this back and forth with players. So it seems like the, the author is really um, doing a lot to make sure that data is accurate. So that does make me more comfortable. And he does here explain his methodology. So because the website explains exactly how he's getting the data, that also makes me a little more comfortable uh, with the data on here. And there's other resources too that we'll talk about a little bit later, but you can even download like bulk population information in Excel spreadsheets if that's something you're interested in. But let's go ahead and dive now into the actual data. So let's go to the server tab and we're gonna start talking about this. So first thing we can see here is a pie graph of, the, of all the servers and what percentage of each server is shown uh, it makes up uh, whatever percentage of the population and I do not see hardcore on here which is one which is a little weird I guess it, I don't think that well, the website is tracking hardcore currently I would I would assume since I don't see it on the website so this is just of the regular servers so as, as we can see here which we kind of already knew is that Wayfinder is by far the smallest uh, it looks like it doesn't give a percentage exactly on here but it looks like something like two percent two to three percent of the the total players on the regular servers are on Wayfinder the others tend to be around 13 12 to 13 to 14 percent so 12 to 14 percent and then Thalanus is currently a little bit higher at 17.6 because it's the default server if you don't know what the default server is that's basically the the, the default the, the server that a new player when they first register is kind of automatically opted into they can change change that and pick a different server if they want but that's kind of the first selection that's given to them so when a server is the default server i mean most new players aren't going to 
pick a different server, they're just going to go with whatever the default is. So that's why the population is higher. Okay, next we get into a line graph here of who's playing when, which tells us information we already knew, which is that the population is higher in the evening. So as you can see here, the population for each server, you know, it peaks somewhere between what, like uh, 4 to 8 p.m. or so. I mean, I think some uh, peak even a little bit before that. It does vary some by server. So some servers do peak later than others and some peak sooner than others. So Kyber, for example, peaks a little bit later in the day, whereas say Kenneth peaks a little bit earlier in the day. So that's probably just due to two differences in how many night owls are on the server versus how many people are on the server that are, that are more day players that also would vary between countries. So uh, it, some countries obviously being in different time zones are going to play at different times during the day. So not everyone is in the US that's playing. So for some people, the peak evening time would be a different time of the day. So if this might be useful data, if you're a new player from a, maybe from a country that's not the United States, you may be able to use this data to, to pick a server that's peaks more during the time you can play. Or if you're, say you're uh, a different sort of player, maybe you play during, or, or sort of person who maybe works night shifts, you could use this data to try to pick out a server that peaks more during the day, because that's when you're gonna be able to play is during the day. All right, uh, so I guess from there, we can move on to uh, uh, this data down here, which is by, by day a bar graph, bar graph by day. And one thing I also wanna point out is all the information on this page is weekly. So it's the last week. So this isn't monthly or yearly, so it's just week. So that makes the data a little bit less reliable. I just wanted to make sure I, I threw that out. This is just the last week. And it also might vary by season, for example. Again, it's just the last week. But based on the last week, we have more data here from the time of the, the days of the week with bar graphs, which, pretty obvious we we knew that people will play more on the weekends i was a little surprised to see that actually sunday is the most played day i figured it would be saturday but it actually sunday seems to be the most played day by a little bit over saturday which is um which again this is just last week so maybe it'll vary maybe next month it'll be a little different but as of the last week sunday was the most played day uh, and not saturday with the other days of the during the week monday through Thursday being a little bit lower as expected. So that's really interesting. So let's move to, um, we're gonna move to grouping next, but I just also wanna point out is you can click on individual servers on this server tab as well and get specific data by server. So if that's something you're interested in, you can do that. But let's go to the grouping tab. So the grouping tab is really interesting. It, it, first of all, right when you click on this, it shows um, on the right screen, right side right here, uh, it shows what streams are currently active or when someone is advertising their stream. I don't know how accurate this, this is actually because I find it hard to believe that nobody's streaming DDO right now. So I'm not sure what the methodology is here, but it says when someone advertises their stream, it'll show up here. But for whatever case, some streams will show up here. Um, I was on the page earlier and it was showing some streams. I'm not sure too how helpful that'll be because you could always just go on Twitch and subscribe to people and get notifications if you're really into watching certain streamers, but hey, it's something. On the left side here, you uh, it shows just quickly what raids are posted. So if you wanna run a raid, it'll show what server. So right now there's an 11 member group on Orion running Vault of Night raid. You can also look on the individual servers to get a more detailed breakdown. So uh, I click on Thalanis, for example, and it shows it just straight out shows the grouping tab, the social tab, which is imported directly from the game. And the, um, the website creator here did say there was a little bit of a lag, so a few minutes lag. So if there's a difference, that's, that's gonna be why. It takes a little while for the data to be pulled and for the website to update. As you can just see, I think it just updated as, as I was scrolling down here. Anyways, this is the current, LFM for Thalanis. All right, and again, you can look on, uh, click on any server you want. So this is a good way to use the to use this website if you want to know if there's any groups currently for your server. You don't have to log into the game anymore. You can just go to this website and click on your server and say, "Hey, I'm Glanda. Oh, I'm at level 15. Look, there's no groups for me at level 15. Oh well, 
maybe I'll try a different character. So, you know, good for that purpose. So let's go now to trends. Okay, trends shows a lot of really detailed, um, a lot of really detailed data. So there's historical data um, based on, on daily number of players that goes from minimum, maximum, one day trends, all this stuff. I'm not gonna go through this, but if you want, you can look through all this stuff. So you can really check the graphs here if you really wanted to. And uh, further, uh, further down on the page, we sh see a lot uh, more detailed graphs which use this data and break it out into more useful line graphs, which is a lot more useful than just having a full Excel table you know, graphs are much easier, much, it's uh, much easier to just visually look at them. But I think the most interesting one is going to be this one year summary at the bottom here. So one thing to take into account is that this website's new. It's only been around for three months, I think exactly three months as of the day I'm recording this. I'm recording this on the uh, 23rd of May. So um, the data begins the 23rd of February. So because of that, the data inherently on the website is known to be not as reliable as it will be a year from now, because we only have three months. And especially it's not quite as reliable because not only do we only have three months, but we are living currently in a period where the, the population is a lot higher than it usually is, just because of the, the combination of two different things, which one, which the line, the line graph here does show, which one is the free to play. So right now, since, let's see, it's been, um, all of April and May, DDO has had a free-to-play promotion where all the all the uh, all the content in the game, all the quest content, has been free to everybody. So because of that, there's been a there has been a probably a bump in the population. But the reason I say probably because we also have the big health crisis, and because of the big health crisis that's going on right now, a lot more people are staying inside. A lot more people are playing. So as you can see in the one-year summary here. And let's see if I can kind of zoom in a little bit. Yeah, here we go. Okay, as you can see here in the one year summary, um, around the end of March, we saw a big population boom. And currently, if you look at this data, the population has just grown a ton since Mar since February. So since February, the population has almost doubled. It's been that big. And as you can see, uh, the line here shows when the free-to-play announcement happened. So I really starting to think that most of the population boom is more due to the health crisis and not as much due to the free-to-play promotion. But it's still hard to it's hard to tell right now, and I, we'll get a better idea again a year from now when all this stuff dies down. Maybe if they do the free-to-play promotion again when when this health crisis is over, we'll we'll get a better picture of it. And we may get a better picture of it if they continue with the free to play and then the health crisis starts to die out in the next few months, hopefully. So, yeah, so we'll see what happens. But one thing we can say for sure is that the population data has, the population has really exploded in the past few months because of these two factors. Okay, so let's move on to some, to, okay, to some, uh, some conclusions I can draw from from this data. So, if you look on the line graph here, the concurrent population before this explosion happened was around around 1,500 players, as we can see on the line graph here. And this is weekly averages of concurrent players. So, 1,500 concurrent players during a typical week. Um, so that's not a peak or a valley. That's just the average. Um, and after that, it was around, it went up to around what, 2,400 to 2,700. So as of right now, that's one thing we can know. I mean, assuming the data on this website is accurate, we do know right now that there's about 2,400 to 2,700 or so concurrent players. It looks like it's trending down a little bit, probably because the, the health crisis is starting to wane a little bit. Stuff is starting to reopen. People are starting to go back to work. So we've seen that wane a little bit. So as of right now, it looks like 2,400 players or so concurrently. And that's a really useful item to know. And it's more useful than what I've done in my prior videos. So this is my third kind of population video I've done over the past past year or so. And in my last one, I, I made an estimate where I basically said that I thought the population, the total population of DDO was around 35 to 40,000 players, not concurrent, total. And you have to take into account this is concurrent on a weekly basis, not total. So it doesn't reflect total population. So it's not like 1,500 players here 
is the population of DDO back in February. Okay, so now we know that from this graph, as of the last three months, the number of concurrent players is somewhere around 2,400 to 2,700 right now, probably trending more towards 2,400. Seems like it's starting to go down a little bit just because, I would assume because uh, people are probably starting to go back to work, things are starting to open up a little bit. And so, and we, we can see before that it was more like 1,500. So that leads us to the next question. What is DDO's total population? And this is something I've attempted to answer in my last few videos. So this is the third population video I've done in the last year or so. And I've changed my mind based on, uh, some based on the data that we have from this website, but also I've kind of realized there's just so many unknowns that it's really not that useful to try to say what is the total population of DDO. And it's not really that helpful because it's going to depend on how you define certain things. So for example, there's a lot of unknowns that we don't have, uh, information that we don't have. So what is the average number of play sessions per player per week? We don't know that. We don't know how long the average play session is. We don't know how each of us defines con current player is going to be different. So how, how I define current player is going to be different from how from how another person might define current players. Current player mean logged in within the last week, within the last month, within the last year. Who knows? Within the last six months, it's just hard to say. So it's just not very useful of a data uh, of a um, data point. In my prior videos, I in my prior video I said that I thought the data the the population was somewhere around like thirty five to forty thousand players. I don't feel that confident in that number anymore, to be honest, looking at this data, this new data from Player Audit. Now, I could be right. It could be correct. And I think it, it's much more likely to be correct considering the current state of things where um, with the population boom, the concurrent players are up in the what 2,400 to 2,700 area. So could that equate to 30,000 players? I still think probably not, but maybe. It just depends on a lot of these factors. So you have to realize that, that when this says concurrent players, that does not mean total players. So that's just number of players logged in on average during the day. Not the total logged in, just at any point in time, that's the number of players logged into the game. So for example, um, like all these players, it's not like on a tip, let's say on a typical week, 1500 was the average concurrent players. It's not like 1500 people logged on one time during one day and played for 24 hours. That obviously isn't the case. So are the same players that are playing at 12 in the morning playing at 12 noon, uh, 12 hours later? Probably not. So you have to do a lot of, you, you have to not just take the flat number, you have to add in a lot of factors and start multiplying the number. And that just involves a lot of guesswork. And I kind of realized looking at my last video that while the number I came up with could be right, it's just not useful because there's just too many factors. We don't know. We don't know. I mean, there's no way we can come up with an accurate number of, of total population because these other factors I already described, there's just too many things. We don't know how long the average play session is. We don't know the, the, the average number of play sessions per week. We don't know the average number of times a person logs in per week. We don't know, you know, we all have a different definition of what current player means. So depending on uh, what your, you know, what your guesswork is on, on those questions, you could come up with 10,000 players, you could come up with 50,000 players for, for DDO's total population. It's just not a figure we're going to know. And it's not something we're really ever going to know without significant guesswork unless SSG comes out and tells us, which they're not going to do that. And does total population really matter anyways? Concurrent is now known from this website, assuming the website's correct, and it's a lot more useful. I would rather know the concurrent players because that actually gives me some information to base on a decision on. If I'm a new player, it would be a lot more useful to know the concurrent players than just the total population number. Also, it doesn't really matter in terms of revenue because you have to understand that the game is going to be making a lot more money from certain players and other players. So a lot of players will refer to these certain types of players as whales, so big spenders who spend a ton of money on the game. And that's gonna be a small percentage of the population. So a bigger population doesn't necessarily mean that they're making more in revenues. It's all, a lot of it comes down to um, those big spenders, which is gonna be a small percentage of the population that's gonna be paying uh, a big percentage of DDO's revenues. And I know I've read accounts of many players uh, of these types of big spenders who have just spent 
ludicrous amounts of money on the game. So they're going to be supporting the game. Uh, a big percentage of the game's revenue is going to be coming from these players. So higher population doesn't necessarily mean the game is doing worse or better financially. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about this site. So with any site like this, we're never going to have 100% certainty of uh, that the data is correct. They even say themselves on this website that the data is, it's, it's not going to be perfect. There's always going to be issues. There's always going to be inaccuracies. It's just the way it is. Um, so you can't expect the data here to be perfect. Again, this is unaffiliated with SSG. So it's just some people in their spare, uh, one guy or two, I don't know how many people did this, uh, at least two collaborated, it appears. So this is just someone in their spare time making a tool and it's, it, it's not anything that's gonna be verified. But I will say that the website does at least explain its methodology. It does full breakdowns. There's even par um, portions of, the, of this website where you can download full Excel files of the data that they pulled from the game and populated. It even has a bug reporting feature. So a lot of these things make me feel like this is the most reliable data we have so far in DDO, and it's probably, as the website says, the most accurate data we're ever going to get. All right, so I guess that's going to be it for, yeah, I think that's going to be it for this video. So guys, uh, hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think about this website. If Please criticize me if there's anything you think I've said that is wrong or anything like that. I don't believe there is, but if there is, let me know. All right, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good one. Take care, and have a great weekend.